subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates this article is multidisciplinary in nature wherein this article can become important both from the perspective of gs paper 2 as well as gs paper 3 under gs paper 2 it shall be important from the perspective of polity and governance particularly from the subsection of government schemes and programs for the poor and vulnerable sections as far as the gs paper 3 is concerned it shall be important from the perspective of indian economy particularly under the subsection of inclusive growth and development based upon a video analysis the two main space question for your practice could be the first question is although beneficial the emergence of gig economy within india has its own shares of concerns and challenges discuss the second question for the practice is the mg narega has had far reaching consequences in improving the rural incomes and promoting the women empowerment in the light of this statement give a reasoned account for launching wage employment program in the urban areas now before we start discussing this particular article in detail let me just give you the background i hope all of you must be aware about the concept of gig economy see gig economy is basically a form of economy wherein the organizations hire contractual and non permanent employees instead of hiring the permanent employees so the workers which are employed with various platform aggregators such as zomato swiggy uber ola flipkart amazon etc can be considered as a gig workers even though we do not have any official estimates as to how many gig workers we have in case of india according to some of the estimates in the media in the year 2019 20 we created almost around 21 lakh jobs in the indian economy out of these 21 lakh jobs 14 lakh jobs alone were created in the gig economy and most of these jobs were created in the food and e-commerce digital platforms now this particular article is based upon the annual review of the gig workers this annual review has been carried out by an oxford based project known as a fair work so as the name suggests this particular project seeks to understand the conditions of work of the gig workers so as part of the conditions of work the fair work has tried to identify as to how much amount of wages have been paid to the gig workers what are their conditions of work how many hours are they spending in their work every day and so on now as part of its annual review the fair work has carried out the conditions of the gig workers in various platform aggregators such as zomato swiggy uber ola etc now based upon such an annual review the fair work has concluded that the status of gig workers particularly in the case of indian economy has continues to remain poor this is on account of poor wages poor working conditions absence of labor unions lower bargaining power and so on hence in order to improve the status of gig workers this article here basically has focus on two important strategies the first strategy is to have a greater amount of convergence between the digital platforms and the government schemes now for example the ministry of housing and urban affairs has recently launched a new scheme known as pradhan mantri street vendors aatmanirbhar nidhi as part of this particular scheme the ministry of housing and urban affairs is providing for collateral free loan of almost up to rupees 10000 to the street vendors in order to support their livelihood opportunities which otherwise have been disrupted by the covid 19 pandemic the food delivery platform swiggy has taken on board some of these street vendors who sell the food hence by taking on board these street vendors it has been able to provide a greater market opportunities for such street vendors so we can have such kind of convergence between the digital platforms and the various government schemes in order to provide for a better employment opportunities as well as market for those gig workers secondly the article has highlighted that if a particular digital platform wants to have a favorable government support be it in terms of tax incentives or any kind of financial support 
then the digital platform should compulsorily disclose the conditions of work of the gig workers which it has employed. Now, for example, the digital platform should disclose as to what is the wages that it is paying to the gig workers, what are the conditions of work which it has laid on for the gig workers, for how many hours the gig workers are required to work in a single day and so on. So if the digital platforms are forced to disclose all of these conditions of work related to the gig workers, then automatically the status of the gig workers in the Indian economy would improve. Please do note that in our DNS stated November 2nd, 2020, we have discussed in detail various concerns and challenges with respect to the gig economy. That is precisely the reason as to why we have not gone into detail about the concerns and challenges with respect to the gig workers. So if you want to attempt this particular question related to the concerns and challenges with the gig economy, I suggest you to go through the DNS stated November 2nd, 2020 to write the answer. As part of this particular video analysis, we will predominantly focus upon the second main question for the practice. That is why there is a need to launch a wage employment program in the urban areas. See the recent distress that has been caused to the urban migrants due to the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored a need to have a dedicated urban wage employment program. Such an urban wage employment program should be on the lines of the MG Narega program which is presently confined only to the rural areas. Some of the experts believe that since we do not have an urban wage employment program presently, most of the workers in the urban areas they are taking up employment in the gig economy. But as seen, under the gig economy, these workers do not have sufficient safeguards in terms of job security. They are paid lower wages. Their conditions of work happen to be quite poor and so on. Hence, in order to provide sufficient amount of safeguards, as well as to promote urban livelihood opportunities, a large number of experts have highlighted that we need to have a urban wage employment program in the urban areas. So before discussing as to what should be the design of such a wage employment program and how this wage employment program will benefit the urban areas, let us first discuss about the features and benefits of MG Narega. Under the MG Narega, at least one adult member of every rural household is given a guaranteed employment of minimum 100 days. The MG Narega has been incorporated in a form of an act passed by the Indian Parliament. So in a way, the MG Narega provides for a right to work to the people living in the rural areas. We call this as right to work because if a particular person applies for a job under MG Narega and if such a person fails to get employment within 15 days of the job application, then such a person is entitled to get the unemployment allowance. Please do note that the MG Narega wages are presently linked to CPI AL, that is CPI Agriculture Labor, and this index is published by the Labor Bureau. Section 17 of the MG Narega Act provides for the social audit. The social audit is different from the financial audit. The basic purpose of carrying out the financial audit is to ascertain whether the government's expenditure is incurred for the purpose it has sanctioned for. However, the basic purpose of carrying out social audit is to find out the social relevance of government's expenditure on various schemes and programs. So as part of the social audit, we try to ascertain as to whatever money is spent by the government of India under the MG Narega, whether it is able to bring about social transformation in the rural areas. So by carrying out the social audit, we are trying to ensure that the government's expenditure under MG Narega is used for the benefit of the poor and the vulnerable sections. The MG Narega Act also provides that at least one third of the workforce under the MG Narega works should be women. And lastly, under the MG Narega, the wage material ratio is required to be 60 is to 40. Now what this means is 60% of the government's expenditure should be incurred for paying the wages, whereas the remaining 40% of the wages can be used for purchase of various materials. So as you can see, a higher proportion of the MG Narega funds is required to be used for payment of wages and this in a way promotes employment creation in the rural areas. 
Now, according to a number of studies, MG Narega program has had a phenomenal success in bringing about the transformation in the rural areas. It has been able to reduce the poverty and unemployment. It has been able to bring about local multiplier effects in terms of improvement in health and nutritional outcomes. This is on account of the fact that as people get employment under MG Narega, their income level increases and they will be in a much better position to invest on health as well as nutrition. Since MG Narega mandates that one third of the workforce should be women, this also leads to women empowerment. It leads to creation of durable assets in terms of rainwater harvesting structures, check dams, roads, etc. And lastly, see the funds which are allocated under MG Narega. They are directly transferred to the Gram Sabha and the Gram Sabha then decides as to for what purposes this particular money has to be utilized for. So in a way, the projects which are to be executed under MG Narega, these projects are carefully chosen through a meeting of a Gram Sabha. So in a way, this government scheme or a program has in turn strengthened the democracy at the grassroots level. So just like how MG Narega has been able to bring about the transformation in the rural areas, we need to have a similar program even in the urban areas. Accordingly, let us discuss as to what should be the design of such an urban wage employment program and how such a program would benefit the urban society. Coming first to the design of the urban wage employment program. See the MG Narega program has been quite effective because of its design. The design of MG Narega is strong, effective and inclusive. So the design for the urban wage employment program should be on the lines similar to MG Narega. First and foremost, just like how under MG Narega, we are provided for right to work to the people living in the rural areas, we need to provide for right to work for the people living in the urban areas, for which the parliament has to enact a law which provides for a guaranteed employment in the urban areas. So first and foremost, we need to provide for a legal sanctity to the urban wage employment program. Secondly, see as far as the urban areas are concerned, in the urban areas we would normally come across two set of people who are looking out for work. One is the informal workers and the second category is the educated youths. Now the urban wage employment program should be in a position to cater to both the informal workers as well as the educated youths. As far as the informal workers are concerned, for these informal workers, we should be able to provide guaranteed work for minimum 100 days. And as far as the educated youths are concerned, for these educated youths, we have to focus more upon skill training and apprenticeship. See, as part of the apprenticeship, the educated youths can get engaged in various industries and get the necessary skill set through the on-job training. As far as the nature of work which can be carried out under this particular program, the finances under this particular program can be used for creation of urban infrastructure such as roads, bridges, etc. The finances can also be used for public services. So some of the educated youths, they can be hired as apprentices in various municipal services such as the municipal schools, municipal hospitals and so on. Now for example, let's say there is a fresh graduate who has recently passed out from the college. Now this fresh graduate can be hired on a contractual basis by the urban local body to teach in the municipal schools. Similarly, the doctors can be hired also as apprentices in district hospitals. See, on one way, we are able to provide the necessary skill set to the educated youths and on the other hand, we are able to provide for a much better municipal services. The funds under this particular program can also be used for the restoration of urban commons such as they can be used for maintenance of parks, water bodies and so on. So on one hand it will be able to create employment opportunities while on the other hand it will be able to maintain the urban environment. Just like MG Narega, this particular program needs to be implemented by the urban local bodies and urban local bodies in order to identify the projects to be executed as well as to prepare the annual work plans, these urban local bodies should, should consult the wards. So through the identification of the projects in a participatory manner, 
in close association with the wards the urban local bodies will be able to ensure the success of the urban wage employment program on a line similar to mg narega in order to strengthen the implementation of this particular program just like how we are provided for the social audit under mg narega even for this particular program we need to provide for the social audit further we also need to provide for a mandatory grievance redressal mechanism now coming to the rational and benefits of the urban wage employment program first and foremost presently in case of india we do not have a dedicated program to boost the wage employment in the urban areas earlier the government of india used to implement the swarna jayanti shahri rozgar yojana which was launched in the year 1997 however in the year 2013 this particular program was in turn replaced by the national urban livelihood mission the basic emphasis of the urban livelihood mission is on self employment and entrepreneurship rather than providing wage employment hence a dedicated wage employment program will be able to provide the necessary employment to the people in the urban areas nextly as you must be aware presently the indian economy is facing the economic slowdown this economic slowdown is primarily on account of decline in the consumption expenditure this is further accompanied by decline in the employment creation according to periodic labor force survey report 2017-18 the unemployment rate in case of india is at 45 year high of 6.1 percentage in particular the unemployment among the educated youths is much higher at 20 percentage the urban unemployment is much higher than the rural unemployment thus by having a separate dedicated program not only we would be able to boost the demand but we would also be able to solve the problem of unemployment in the urban areas nextly see if you look at the present state of urbanization in case of india according to census 2011 it is around 32 percentage according to a recent study carried out by the world bank the level of urbanization is set to increase to 42 percentage by the end of 2030 however the problem in case of the urban areas is that these urban areas are not in a position to provide the necessary infrastructure to the people hence such a dedicated program would be able to plug the existing infrastructure deficiencies nextly according to economic survey 2018-19 india is presently in a state of demographic transition according to economic survey the share of the working age population is set to increase from 50 percentage in the year 2011 to 59 percentage in 2041 whereas the share of senior citizens is set to increase from 8 percentage in 2011 to 16 percentage by the end of 2041 as the demography of india is undergoing change we need to provide the necessary services in the urban areas we need to provide for necessary education facilities housing facilities healthcare facilities particularly for the senior citizens and so on so such a dedicated wage employment program would also be able to cater to a changing demography nextly see if you look at the urban local bodies the urban local bodies do not have adequate amount of finances to undertake infrastructure creation moreover the urban local bodies they face huge shortage of manpower this in turn is leading to poor municipal services so by having a dedicated wage employment program we would be able to address the financial and manpower constraints of the urban local bodies lastly see the supreme court of india has highlighted that article 21 of the indian constitution which provides for right to life this article does not necessarily mean only bodily existence this also means a quality of life which is enriching this is possible by providing other rights such as right to education right to health right to work and so on one among these aspects is right to work which is provided by the urban wage employment program this in a way would lead to expansion of the constitutional rights guaranteed by the indian constitution so these are some of the benefits of having a dedicated urban wage employment program